What's going on, YouTube? The Soul arrived late to the boxcar game, but it proved to have a lethal combination of style, versatility, and affordability, since it quickly killed off all the direct rivals. Now we are here today with the sequel, which is doubling down on all those same characteristics. Of course, we do want to especially thank our new friends at Car Town Kia USA for letting us check out this upper-end Soul GT line. And if you're in the market for any new Kia, be sure to stop by their dealership or visit them via their website, which we provided a link to in the video description. So with all that said, let's see how much the new Soul has upped its game. So starting off with the exterior styling, this of course is probably the main reason why the Soul has been so successful. For the all-new model, many of the same characteristics stick around, but everything just has a meaner look to it now. The front is the biggest departure, since it does away with the signature tiger nose grille in favor of a really large lower grille and two smaller slots above it. Of course, since this is the GT line, its fascia is upgraded over the other trims, with silver in the middle and the red accent along the bottom. The other thing that changes a lot between the trims are these lights. Now we've got the regular halogen setup that is on most of the models. So the daytime running light and the turn signal are up top, and then the actual headlight is in the middle. Going for the EX upgrades you to projector beams, and the GT Turbo has full LED lights. And finally, fog lights are included on the X-Line, EX, and non-turbo GT. Moving on to the side, of course it does continue to be square, but this year there are some new exciting color options. The X-Line, EX, and both GT trims have new multicolor roof and mirror options, plus the red accent that all GT lines already get. And then heading around back, it is also very unique looking, even on this black model which hides it a little bit. Now in all the other colors, the middle part would continue to be black, creating an interesting island effect that is hidden on this particular model. But of course the taillights are the most interesting part since they encompass the entire back. And if you get one of the models with LED headlights, then these would also be LED. Finally, at the bottom, only the GT models get this aggressive rear diffuser. So overall, this is just a really cool looking car. Kia has kept the good things about the outgoing model, but took out all the cartoonness from the old one. Now moving on to the wheels, there are a lot of different options to match your style. This being a higher end model means we have the 18 inch contrast alloys unique to the GT line. However, the X line does also get 18 inch alloys in a different design. Choosing the EX gets you dark finished 17 inch alloys and then 16 inch alloys and 16 inch steel wheels on the S and LX respectively. Heading on up to the mirrors, they are painted to be the same color as the roof on most trims, but they are only heated on the GT Turbo and the EX. You might also be noticing our lack of blind spot monitoring, and that's because it is interestingly the only trim besides the base model to not have it as standard equipment. Now as far as the other safety systems, they are also spread across the trims in between the LX, which has none of them, and the GT Turbo, which has all of them. So for the sake of clarity, here's a chart that lays them all out. Finally, the last thing to cover on the outside is the 14.3 gallon fuel tank, which is good for 429 miles of range for this model and the vast majority of souls. Additionally, it does use regular unleaded fuel for both engines. But anyways, that covers the boxy and stylish exterior. So now let's see if that shape has made a lot of space on the inside. So on this sole, we've got the standard keyless entry system. However, if you go for the EX or the GT Turbo, you'll get the smart entry system. However, as you can see, even this model does come with Kia's nice new key fob, where we've got the buttons down here on the side, then you can press here to release the switchblade key. Oh, 
All right, so checking out the cabin of the all new 2020 Soul. As you can see, it keeps a lot of the fun, funky characteristics from the outgoing model, but with a little bit more maturity. Now, as far as your color and material options, Kia does keep it pretty simple. So on your LX and your X line models, you're gonna have a woven cloth. And then going up to the S, G, T, or E, X is going to get you this premium cloth. And then if you want the leatherette trim, you'll have to go for the G, T, Turbo. Now as far as your color choices, you have black or gray options across the board, uh, except on the G, T, Turbo with the leatherette, where you'll have a black and red combination. Now turning over here to your door trim, it is nicely finished. So as you can see, you do have a padded leatherette area for your arm to rest on, and you do have a really nice hand grab here. Now as far as your windows, they are one touch down for the driver only. Now checking out the seat here, this is your standard six-way manual adjusting seat. However, if you go for the EX, you'll have an eight-way power seat, and if you go for the top-end GT Turbo, it'll be upgraded to 10-way power. And then like I was saying, this is the premium cloth seat, uh, and it does indeed look very premium, uh, feels nice to the touch, and you've got the nice stitching detail along the side. So like I already said, the cabin does maintain that fun, funky vibe. However, versus the outgoing model, the materials have been upgraded. So unlike many of the rivals, the upper dash is actually soft touch plastic and it has a really nice high quality graining to it. And then as you move down lower, of course, some of the pieces are hard touch, but everything fits together really, really solidly and you won't notice any panel gaps or anything like that. Now, as I've already shown you, we do have the traditional key. So you just stick that in and twist it to start. Now coming over here to your display, this is the standard seven inch display. It comes on most of the models. Um, however, if you go for the EX or the GT Turbo, you get the really, really large 10.25 inch display that we just showed off in the Telluride a few weeks ago. Uh, and that's really, really impressive for the class. So checking out the gauges here, this is the setup you'll find on most soles. Uh, however, if you get the EX or the GT Turbo, you will have a little bit bigger of a multi-function display. Nevertheless, this does uh, have your basic information in it, so you can just cycle through your safety systems, uh, various settings regarding your doors, lights, and fuel economy. Um, additionally, if you go for the GT Turbo, uh, you'll actually have a head-up display, which of course is very rare for anything in this class. Now coming back to the steering wheel, this is probably my favorite part of the entire cabin. Uh, just a really, really nice feeling steering wheel, a high quality leatherette. It is flat bottomed here on the GT line, and it just looks and feels very, very good. Now you do have your standard affair buttons over here for your uh, audio, phone, and voice commands. And then over here you've got your cruise control as well as your multi-function display. Uh, the steering wheel is always manually tilt and telescoping. Uh, and you will have heating on the GT Turbo. We'll also point out over here, um, this is the button to defeat your auto start-stop system. Now moving on to interior storage, the Soul has quite a lot for a vehicle of this size. So as always, starting off with your center console, as you can see, it's surprisingly deep, uh, and Kia has even included a nice felt lining down at the bottom. Of course, in front of that, you've got your two cup holders. And then up in the very front, you've got another really large bin, great for sticking a phone or something like that, as well as two US, uh, two 12 volt outlets and a USB port. Now this, uh, the floor of this could be a wireless phone charger if you go for the EX or the GT Turbo. Now coming back to the shifter here, this is actually the same shifter as we had in the uh, all new Telluride. Uh, except that this part is not real metal. However, it does still uh, feel really, really nice. 
and it's traditional, so you can just push over to the side to shift manually. And if you go for the GT Turbo, you will have paddle shifters, which is a first for the Soul. When you go into reverse, all models do come standard with a backup camera, and we also have active trajectory as well. Now next to the shifter, you'll find this drive mode button across the lineup. Um, there's only two drive modes, so you can just cycle between normal and sport. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in the drive. All right, so the next thing up the list here is the climate controls. Now the vast majority of models will come with this manual setup. However, like many of the features, if you go for the EX or the GT Turbo, you're gonna have a dual zone automatic setup. Like I said, of course, this is the manual setup, so you've got four fan settings here, uh, as well as a just a climate switch on that side for your temperature, and then, of course, your zones on that side. Additionally, you will find heated seats on those top two trims as well. Anyways, now that brings us up here to the audio systems. Now, there are two different options. Um, with the base six speaker sound system comes on all of the trims except for the GT Turbo, which comes with a 10 speaker Harman Kardon sound system. However, of course, we do have the basic system, so let's go ahead and take a sample. to say I am really impressed by this sound system. Uh, most of the things in this class, uh, they can be honestly horrendous. And uh, even this bass sound system sounds really good, sounds better than a lot of the other rivals upgraded sound systems. Uh, and of course I do want to mention that if you get the higher trims, you do have uh, still have the speakers that light up and do a bunch of cool tricks uh, just like the outgoing model. But anyways, that brings us back here to the Kia Yubo system. So let's go ahead and take a quick look. So like I already said, you can get two different size screens with this Yubo system. Um, this is the seven inch display, it comes on most of the models. Uh, the upper end trims get the 10.25 inch display and that does have the, uh, the split screen abilities as well. But checking out this version, as you can see, you do have a home screen and you can click on to these apps to expand them. So we can click into our Bluetooth audio where we can play and pause the music straight from here. You can also click on the thing called All Menus, and this just brings up all your applications here in one spot. Now, what you're probably noticing is the most important applications, which is both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which are both standard and on every single trim of the sole, even the base LX. That, of course, does give you the ability to use navigation like Google Maps, even if you don't go for one of the upper end trims which have integrated navigation, the EX and the GT Turbo. But anyways, that's the general gist of the Kia Uvo system. However, we will have a dedicated tech help video available for those of you who want to learn more. A link to that is in the video description. Now moving on up, you will find a manually dimming mirror. However, you could get an auto dimming one with home and universal remotes as an option across all the trims. Additionally, we don't have a moonroof. However, it is an option on this GT as well as standard on the GT Turbo. But anyways, the cabin of the Soul is a really impressive place. I like the balance of both having the fun and quirky styling, but at the same time not sacrificing anything ergonomically. So all in all, really good job. But anyways, now I'll go ahead and hand it off to Mason who will finish up the rest of the cabin. So 
checking out the rear seat of the all-new 2020 Kia Soul, you're going to find a really large amount of space for its class. It's technically rated at 38.8 inches of rear leg room and 39 and a half inches of rear headroom, which is really amazing for the class. It's a lot larger than most of the rivals like the Nissan Kicks and Honda HR-V. Now turning over here to the door trim, it is a really nice design for a vehicle like this. So you do have a leather wrapped armrest, which is really a, quite a nice feature for this class. And the rest is put together really nicely. And I'm also a really big fan of this trim. Now of course your window is power and you do have a little bit of storage down here. Now turning over to the seat itself, uh, you do have a color contrast design here. Uh, so you have gray in the middle and black on the outside edges and it is a pretty comfortable seat overall. Now in the center, there aren't very many features as you would expect, so no soul will ever have any rear air vents. However, on the EX and GT Turbo, you will have two USB ports. Now we are also missing a rear armrest, but up top we do have a really nice headliner, as well as a center dome light. And over here on the side, you do have an assist grip and cup hook. Now like I was mentioning on the outside, there is a ton of space here in the soul's rear seat. So behind Drew's seating position, I probably have about a foot of rear leg room, and my feet can't easily slide up under the seat, which is basically unheard of in this class. And sliding over, even with the seat scooted all the way back, I still have several inches of rear leg room, and they were even nice enough to include a couple neat cutouts. But overall, I'm actually really impressed by the soles rear seat. I like the fact that there's a leather armrest back here, and on the higher end trims, you would also have the option of getting a lot of features in addition to the already a lot amount of space. Now the rear seats of the Sol do fold, so all I have to do is locate this little handle and pull forward. They do fold 60-40 split. And coming around to the tailgate, of course it is not really power or anything, so all you have to do is locate this button under the lid and push it to open. And once inside, you're going to find another large amount of space. You'll find 24 cubic feet behind the second row seats, and that expands to 62 cubic feet with them folded. Now like I said, that is a large amount of space, so it's actually bigger than the Honda HRV and right on par with the Nissan Kicks. Now in addition to that, it is finished pretty nicely, so you do some lighting, as well as a cargo net, and under the floor you do have a spare tire. Now of course coming over to the passenger seat is the same design, and it is also manually adjusting. Now the materials in front of the passenger are surprisingly solid, so I do really like this padded dashboard up here. And down below that, there is a nicely sized glove box, and it does have illumination inside. Now up top, we do have a sun visor. It does have mirror and lighting, and you can also detach it and extend it. But anyway guys, that pretty much sums up all the rear amenities of the Soul. So now let's go ahead and check out the powertrain and see how it performs on the road. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the powertrains. Now there are two different engines available. The vast majority of models are gonna come with your two liter four cylinder with 147 horsepower and 132 pound feet of torque. Um, like I said, that's on all of the trims as standard equipment. However, the GT Turbo, as I've been talking about leading up to this, as you would imagine, it does have a turbo engine. <laughs> uh, it's got the 1.6 liter turbocharged four-cylinder from the outgoing generation, and that makes 201 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque. Now, as far as the transmissions, there's actually three different options. So the LX will come standard with a six-speed manual, 
However, of course, it does have the option for the automatic. And the automatic is now a CVT instead of the six-speed automatic of the last generation. Uh, and then the third option, it comes on your GT Turbo, which has a seven-speed dual-clutch automatic instead of the CVT. As far as putting power to the ground, it is delivered via the front wheels only. Um, there is not an optional all-wheel drive system, which some of the rivals do offer. And then finally, as far as your fuel economy, the Soul is very efficient, as you would expect. So the model that most people go for, which is your 2.0-liter with CVT, is rated at 29C, 35 highway, 31 combined. However, if you get that uh, manual version, that's going to drop down to 27 combined. And then if you're wondering what your fuel economy penalty is, if you go for that turbo engine, it's not very much. Uh, you're going to drop to 29 combined. But anyways, that pretty much sums up the powertrain situation. So now let's go ahead and take it for a spin. first acceleration here in the 2020 Soul. Uh, definitely feels pretty peppy. You know, a vehicle like this, um, you don't expect you know, mind-boggling power or anything like that, but it definitely gets up to speed fine. Also notice right off, right away that your CVT does simulate gear changes, yes. which is, you know, something that a lot of automakers have been doing recently. So, it, uh, you, you still have that traditional feel from an uh, an autom like the automatic of the outgoing model. Yeah, no, it actually does a really, really good job of the, the shift simulation um, because when you kind of pushed it, the throttle down, I really didn't realize that it was a CBT. Um, so I don't think most people will notice. Also, as we cruise down the road here, I want to talk about how hushed the cabin is. Now, there is a little bit of road noise, and that's actually just from this road. Uh, really beat up, really rough, no matter what car that you drive on. Um, but the wind noise and the isolation, as far as that, is really superb. I don't hear any type of wind, uh, any type of external noises from like the tires or whatever. I really like the feel of the brakes. Uh, extremely linear. Um, a very good progression and good bite initially. Uh, you know, a lot of cars don't do simple things like that correctly. I do appreciate that. Now, our, our auto start stop system has just engaged. It is standard equipment on the Soul this year. Uh, and once this light turns green, we'll see how smoothly it restarts. Did a very good job. course, as I already pointed out a little earlier in the review, you can defeat the auto start stop system if that's something that's going to annoy you. But for the average person, I imagine you'll probably leave it on and just uh, cash in on the fuel economy savings. Yes. Now, another thing I think Kia has done really well is the steering. This is electric power assisted, but it doesn't feel like super numb or anything like a lot of the rivals. And it's also pretty responsive, so you get quite a bit of turn with just a small amount of, of actually moving the steering wheel, and uh, you know that helps it to feel alive and responsive. And also, like going around that corner back there, we were kind of uh, going around the corners pretty tight, and uh, you know this car feels surprisingly buttoned down. I like it feels almost kind of sporty. Um, in a sense, and that's really an awesome thing to have in this class because, I mean, everyone in this class is probably just lethargic and absolutely terrible to drive, but uh, this car actually seems pretty sporty and fun to drive, and this is marketed as a fun to drive car, so it's nice to see that Kia actually kind of made it fun to drive. I've already complimented it on the actual steering wheel itself, but I'll compliment it again. 
I, I just really like the feel of it. I, it. It feels great in the hand. It looks really stylish. Um, and it does have a really a high quality feeling leatherette trim on it as well. It definitely feels higher caliber than you know a car that can start out well under $20,000. Once again, really pleased with the balance of the chassis. It feels really buttoned down, really well balanced, and it pairs, like I said, nicely with this steering, uh, which doesn't have any type of dead space at all. There's so many rivals that it's just a total void, it's especially when your first initial turn in just is nothing. Um, and in this car, just go rounding a corner, it takes just a very little input. And like I said, it matches really good with how balanced that everything feels. You can just round these corners. It feels very tossable. Yeah, it, it does. It has a nice tossable feel. Very fun. Now we put it into sport mode, um, so we'll see if it responds any differently here. subcompact vehicles the sport mode isn't changing things like the steering or the suspension or anything like that basically it's changing the throttle response more or less but it definitely has a more aggressive tip in holds the revs higher and longer um, but you know you want to have a little bit of fun and this is a car that you could have a little bit of fun in because like, like we just said it is tossable and it it was a pretty enjoyable to drive on the curvy road Overall, I have to say I'm very impressed by the way that the new Soul drives. Um, like I've mentioned many times during this test drive, a lot of the rivals can be just uh, really bland, really uninspired. And what I like about the Soul is, well, it feels like it has a soul, you know, when you're driving it. It is, you know, without sacrificing efficiency and the important things like that, it does still feel pretty fun to drive and uh, you know they just done a really good job overall with the packaging of the vehicle plus the driving dynamics don't let you down and I really appreciate that. Okay and as far as the pricing is concerned for the 2020 Kia Soul you are going to find pretty affordable pricing now there are quite a few different trim levels you can pick between. So for the very base Soul LX with the manual transmission, that's going to come in at $17,490. Now if you want to move up the trims to the Soul S, that is $20,290. And it is also worth mentioning that you can get the Soul GT Line 2 liter uh, for the same price of $20,290. Now, if you want to keep going up, you have the Soul X line, and that's $21,490. And then you have the Soul EX for $22,690. And then finally, you have the very top end trim, which is the GT line with the turbo engine. Um, and that comes in quite a bit more expensive. It jumps all the way to $27,490. Now, this particular one is the Soul GT line 2 liter. Uh, and we do have a few different options. So we have the shadow black paint for $345, uh, carpeted floor mats for $130, and a cargo net for $70. And then finally, when you add in the $995 destination charge, this one's particular price is $21,830, which is definitely an affordable vehicle uh, for how nice this car is. And it really looks great on the outside. Um, so I'm very impressed with the pricing of this vehicle. Well guys, we hope you enjoyed watching one of the first in-depth looks at the 2020 Kia Soul GT line. Please hit those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already, and we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.
Mm-hmm.